go for the Lord. Come on, for the Lord. For the Lord, come on, for the Lord.
첫 번째 거, 첫 번째 거. 우리의 대망의 첫 번째 거. 아, 아, 아. 
한번더 해야 돼 연습. 우리가 한번더 해야 돼 연습. 아아 아. 아, 아. 한번더 해볼게요. 한 번만 더 해도 될까? 사람이 모두하시기 때문에. 그렇지 보고 있으면 안 되는데. 뒤에만 보고서 떼고 있어. 
Okay, it's time to worship now. Come on in. Yes. Please come on in. Uh, let's begin today's worship with a word of prayer. Let's pray together. Let's pray. Father, thank you. Thank you for gathering us here in your temple again. By your grace, we can come before you in your presence. How can we not praise your name? From the morning to evening, your grace upon our lives is full of wonderful gifts. Father, please teach us how to thank and how to praise your name properly. And receive our praise and pray in this time of worship. What a wonderful love we have now through worship. Please, please come close to us. Thank you again. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hello? Oh, your voice is really low now. Hello? <laughs> Hello. Uh, okay, let's sing. After one sing, and then let's stand up together. <laughs> okay, let's sing together. Lift him up all together.
I think we need to stand up together. I think this is training session, just just for training. Let's let's clap and let when we stand up, we can we can sing louder than now. I think. Can, okay. Uh, can you please? Thank you. Yes, let's praise God with all our body, with all our heart. I know, I know. Uh, for the Lord is good. Let's let's sing together.
Parents' Day in Korea. It's Parents' Day, and we lift up our Father, our parents, Heavenly Father. So let's pray for let's pray to our God that uh, pray for our nations, pray for our church, uh, for the senior the process of senior pastor election. Let's pray for that. And also, let's pray for Shiloh. Uh, pray for Pastor James, who speaks today. Put his spirit upon him. Let's pray for him. And for the people who are in need of a prayer, like, like, like Kimberly, uh, for her full recovery, and for Sister Noel, for her, for her body condition. Let's pray for her. And for Pastor McCauley, 
for Oh Min Sik, Jessica Hemming, Roxanne for the recovery. And in Malaysia, there's Madeline, Elders Madeline's family. For, for her family, let's pray for them. And then let's pray for ourselves that God, please give us the strength to repent ourselves, our sins, our transgressions. Let's pray for that. We're going to sing together, transcend the time, and then pray together.
Bible. Let's pray together. So, Amen. Hallelujah. Three times. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father God, we sincerely thank you for your abundant grace for gathering us at your holy sanctuary on this beautiful Lord's Day. Father God, yesterday we took a day trip to Mount Jiri. We thank you so much for granting us a perfect day where we embraced your presence throughout the whole journey. Although the roads were rugged and rough, it truly was a time for unity and peace, appreciating the true sacrifices and love of our Lord Jesus Christ. It was also a time for repentance on how much we should be grateful for the history of redemption, which you have bestowed upon our founding pastor, Reverend Abraham Park, through his sacrifice of three years, six months, and seven days upon the mountain. Let us all be humble, yet be strong, and laser beam focused to spread this precious word of life to many nations in the world. Father God, as we are about to receive your precious word through Pastor James today, Please strengthen and bless him both physically and spiritually so that every one of our hearts may be open and become true soldiers of our Lord Jesus Christ. Today is also Parents' Day, where we must honor our parents just as how Jesus honored you as your filial son according to how you have commanded us in the fifth commandment. Please let us remember their sacrifices and appreciate their love. Thank you once again for receiving our prayers, and we pray in the most precious name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, in thanksgiving. Amen. Bread of Life today comes from one place in the Old Testament. Uh, we'll now read from Haggai chapter 2, verse 7. Haggai chapter 2, verse 7. Haggai chapter 2, verse 7. 
And I will shake all the nations, and they will come with the wealth of all nations. And I will fill this house with glory, says the Lord of hosts. This is the word of God. Amen. Uh, now it's time for a choral anthem. Thank you so much. Um, now uh, we'll have uh, Pastor James come up on the podium and he will share with us uh, today's message titled Lecture 13 on uh, Redemptive Historical Characteristics of Zerubbabel's Temple, Part 2. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, today is Parents Sunday, and uh, could we take this time to greet uh, each other, the person who's on the left and right uh, behind you and in front of you? Say, uh, welcome to Shiloh. Let's do that right now. Let's, yeah. Welcome to Shiloh. Yeah. 
Okay. Uh, thank you so much for that uh, <laughs> little bit of awkwardness, but all right. Thank you so much, uh, choir, for that wonderful praise. And today is uh, Parent Sunday where we remember uh, the blessings and the grace given to us through our parents. And especially, not only just our physical parents, uh, but also our spiritual parents and God our Father. And you know, my uh, mom is not with us, she's in heaven, but I give thanks to God that she's alive in heaven, that she's a living one, and that she's enjoying the everlasting joy and peace and Sabbath in Christ. And you may have parents, and so please give them a call. Let them know that you love them, and let them know that you're thankful for, you know, all of those years of love that you have received. And I believe that your parents will truly be touched and inspired by your call. You know, uh, when you live life, nothing is guaranteed. You know, I'm going to go study next year and I'm going to do business next year. And we have all of these plans, but we don't know what's going to even happen today. And so the senior pastor always taught us to give thanks in all circumstances to be able to hold on to the precious time of today. And so please do that. Take your time to call your parents, tell them you love them, and tell them that you are truly thankful for their concern and their love. And I believe that God will be happy. Amen? It was a little quiet. Can I, can I get a amen? Amen, yes. So today is Redemptive Historical Characteristics of Zerubbabel's Temple, and it's the second part. And why don't we read the main passage together, and this is uh, what we're going to expand on today. So Haggai chapter 2, verse 7, and we're studying off of the Christian Military Academy. So if you do not have workbooks, uh, it may be a little bit hard to follow, but we may have extra books that, um, that we can give out. And if you don't have the books, you can follow along uh, in writing notes. So let's read Haggai chapter 2, verse 7 together. Ready, begin. I will shake all the nations, and they will come with the wealth of all nations. And I will fill this house with glory, says the Lord of hosts. This is the word of God. Amen. So in the last lecture, we examined how Zerubbabel's temple was built within God's administration of redemptive history, and that it was built according to God's word, his prophecy made through the prophets, and that it was a temple that had no ark of the covenant. And this is what we covered before. And in today's lecture, we're going to study the Zerubbabel's temple from two perspectives. And the first perspective is that it's a temple that will bring in the wealth of the nations. So what does that mean? Does that mean money? Does that mean dollars or won or yen? Does that mean pounds? What does that mean? And then secondly, we're going to talk about the temple that only anticipates the Messiah. So Zerubbabel's temple is the temple that anticipates the coming Lord. And if you remember... The Zerubbabel temple became expanded to the Herod's temple. And just as God's word prophesied, Jesus came into the Zerubbabel's temple, the Herod's temple. And so this is very important in dealing with uh, eschatology. So first of all, the temple that will bring in the wealth of the nations. So what is the wealth of the nations? We read Haggai chapter 2 verse 7. And first of all, it's not a what, but it is a who. So Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, the wealth of all nations. Jesus is the true treasure. He is the true wealth of all nations. So Colossians 2.3, this is talking about Jesus, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. So Jesus Christ is our true, is our true wealth, is our true precious stones and gems. He is our treasure. So what do you value in life? 
What is your treasure? And the Bible says that where your heart is, there your treasure will be as well. Meaning your money or your offerings, everything that you value. And so calculate in your head right now, you know, all the money that you spend, where do you put your money at? And that's where your heart is. Where your heart is, that's where your treasure is. Where your treasure is, that's where your heart is. And my wife and I, uh, we do, you know, accounting, and she takes care of all of the bills. I have no rights in management of the money. And so I get a little bit of offering, or not offering, but pocket money every month, you know, $40. <laughs> and uh, I have to live on $40 a month. And she takes care of all of the uh, expenses. And, and that's really uh, fine with me. You know, it's a, a burden. And to be honest, you know, when she does all of the calculations, the, the, mo- the most amount of money that goes out is to uh, offerings and uh, to tithings. And it's, uh, you know, this is a, uh, a statement I can make before God. Even in our, you know, living costs or uh, in eating or food, that's very little compared to uh, what we give to the church. It's not, it's not a, a, a bragging, but uh, we value the church and its work more than we value eating or we value uh, buying clothes or, you know, enjoying life. You know, we'd rather, you know, share one, you know, lunchbox or, you know, just to save money to give to the church. That's our philosophy. Uh, we don't like to buy fancy clothes or fancy bags or shoes. We'd rather save that money and give it to the uh, church for offering. And so where your treasure is, what is your treasure? Jesus Christ is our true treasure. He needs to be, he needs to be our true treasure. So the wealth of all nations with the greater glory. God promised that the latter glory would be greater than the former glory. In Haggai 2.9, it says, The latter glory of this house will be greater than the former. And we study that the former glory is talking about Solomon's temple, right? And Solomon's temple was such a, a vast temple. And it was made out of, you know, expensive cedar wood and gold. And, and it was very, uh, it was very uh, splendorous and glorious. And they had a great dedication service. And then when you compare Solomon's temple and to Zerubbabel's temple, Zerubbabel's temple was so small. It was so insignificant compared to Solomon's temple. But God said that the latter glory... The glory that would fill Zerubbabel's temple would be greater. And that's talking about Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter all the gold and silver and all of the expensive wood that you make into the temple, the sanctuary. But the important thing is that Jesus dwells in that temple. And he is the greater glory. And if you are a believer of the word and are a Christian, I believe that that treasure abides in you. Amen? And so 1 Corinthians 5, 17, it says, uh, those who have received the word are new creations. Why? Because Jesus Christ is in you. Jesus Christ is in you. And so the former glory is referring to Solomon's temple, as I just mentioned. But the latter glory, the latter glory is the glory of the only begotten from the Father. And so let's read John chapter 1. Verse 14 together. Let's read that. It's on your screen and it's in your workbooks. Ready, begin. And the word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. And we saw his glory. Glory as of the only begotten from the Father. Full of grace and truth. So as Christians, we need to seek the glory of Jesus Christ. His presence. So when you pray, let me ask you a question. Are you seeking God's blessings, or are you seeking to meet God himself? Because that is the greatest joy and the greatest treasure. Are we always asking God? I mean, we need to ask and we need to pray. 
God, give me this and give me that and lead me to prosperity and let my business do well. But are we praying to come closer to God because He is our treasure? Are we praying to experience His holiness and experience His presence? And that needs to be our prayer. And that's a challenge to you and I. Third, the glory of Jesus' second coming will be the greatest glory than any other glory in the past. So it's a connection. So the greater glory was Jesus Christ, but even the greatest glory will fulfill in the time of the second coming. So when Father comes in His glory, He will come in a new glory that we cannot even imagine or we cannot even fathom. And so... That's why when He comes, He will come in a new glory and we need to be able to receive Him. So Revelations 21, 11, having the glory of God, her brilliance was like a very costly stone as a stone of crystal clear jasper. And this is talking about the eternal temple where God will dwell with us. We are His temple. Revelation 21, 23, And the city has no need of the sun or of the moon to shine on it, for the glory of God has illumined it, and its lamp is the Lamb. So we dwell in Him, and He dwells in us, and we become the temple of God. He also becomes our temple as well. And that is the greatest glory, the greatest treasure. And the second part about this wealth of the nations it is the wealth of nations who gives true peace, true peace. And so when you're living your lives of faith, you may be a Christian or not a Christian, but do you have this true peace that only God can give? And if you look at Haggai 2.9 in uh, part B of that verse, it says, And in this place I will give peace, in this place. So this place is talking about uh, the latter house, the latter temple that will be built, and the latter glory that will come into that house. And in that place, He will give peace. Our church is named uh, First Peace Church, right? It's Pyongang Jail Church. And on the stone, it says, My peace I give you. And in the end time, uh, we know that Melchizedek will come, and he is the king of peace. He is called the King of Kings, and He will give us that peace through the Word. Jesus, when He resurrected and showed Himself to the disciples, the first thing that He said, He says, Do not fear. And He breathed on them the Holy Spirit, and He says, Peace I give you. Peace I give you. You may be a Christian, and you may have experienced this peace, but that peace may become broken because of sin or because of worries or anxiety. But if you look at Philippian, Philippians chapter 4, verse 4 through 8, it says, Entrust all of your carriers and worries upon God. And when you come to Him and give thanksgiving and entrust Him with all of those things, He will give you peace. And that peace is a peace that transcends all understanding and will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. And so may the peace of Jesus Christ be coming upon you. And this peace is not just a good feeling. It's not just, oh, I feel this peace. Of course, it's a feeling, but peace is wholeness. May there be wholeness in your heart. May you be healed of hurt and pain and scars and trauma. May your families be whole. May there be peace. Shalom. That's what shalom means. Nothing broken, but it means to be whole. And may there be peace upon your children and on your families as we come upon the month of the family. And I pray and bless this upon you in the name of the Lord. Amen. Also, Jesus came as the glory of the only begotten of the Father. And John 14, 27. And as I mentioned already, this is the first word of Jesus. And let's read this together. Ready? Begin. Peace I live with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives 
to, do I give to you? Do not let your heart be troubled, nor let it be fearful. So this is the word that he gave before he died on the cross, but also it's the same word that he gave after he resurrected. Same word. John 20, 19. And let's look at the last part. Ready, begin. Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. So for fear of the Jews, they were hiding, right? So Jesus came and he gave the same message. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. John 20, verse 21. Peace be with you. John 20, 26. He stood in their midst and he said, Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Jesus is the king of peace. He's also called the Prince of Peace, Isaiah 9, verse 6. His name is Wonderful. We have to make a break. Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, and Prince of Peace, or the King of Priests. And so he is our Eternal Father, the one who gives peace. And he is Melchizedek. And he is the one, the King of Righteousness from uh, Jerusalem, which is the city of peace. Jerusalem means uh, Jeru Shalom, and it means city of peace. And next, we said that Jesus is the true wealth, but also the people of God are the treasures of all nations. And you and I have to understand our worth in Christ. God values you more than all of the heavens and the earth put together. It cannot amount to what God values that one soul. One soul is greater than all of the heavens and the earth. You are important to God. You might be saying, who am I? What can I do? And you may have all of these, you know, complexes. You know, I'm weak and inadequate. I'm a nobody, but we are the treasure of God. He treasures us. Deuteronomy 26, 18. Why don't we read this together? Ready, begin. The Lord has declared you to be his people, a treasured possession as he promised you, and that you should keep all his commandments. And also Isaiah 43, 4, it says, You are precious in my sight. And how precious are you? How precious are you? you cannot put a, a price tag. You are so precious that he sent Jesus to die on your behalf. And in your place, he put, you know, Egypt and Cush and Sheba. You needed to die, but in your place, God put the wicked and he put those evildoers and he saved you. And this is how much we are treasured in his sight. And so the people who fear God, are, whose hearts are the abode of Jesus Christ, are the treasures of all nations. So fearing God, those who fear God are the treasures of God. 2 Corinthians 4, 6 and 7, especially verse 7. Let's read this together. Ready, begin. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels so that the surpassing greatness of the power will be of God and not from ourselves. So this treasure is in us. And so we become precious, not because of ourselves, but because we have been created in the image of God. If you read book five of the History of Redemption series, it says that God created the honorable, the honorable man and women. You and I are honorable, and you and I are treasured in his sight. And he's calling out to you today through his voice. May you hear that voice. And third, we're going to talk about the shaking of the nations. So they will come with the wealth of the nations. So the people of the nations will come and they will bring in uh, their wealth. So let's... Uh, See, Haggai 2, 6 and 7. In 7 it says, I will shake all the nations, and they will come with the wealth of the nations, and I will fill this house with glory. And so, 
this is talking about two things. The wealth is talking about, you know, physical wealth. So it's talking about money. So the nations will come and they will bring their wealth. And they will bring their offerings. And they will bring their gifts and sacrifices. But also they will receive the word. So the nations will receive this word and be coming to spiritual Jerusalem. The spiritual Mount Zion. So there's two meanings to the wealth of the nations. And this will happen in the end time. The senior pastor has prophesied and he has declared the word that all of the nations will come dancing to this word. They will be rejoicing. They will receive the word and they will bring their offerings and sacrifices. Mount Sinai shook when the old covenant was received. Exodus 19.18 when they received the word of God, the entire mountain quaked. So it's like an earthquake. When they received the word of God. And I experienced this. Let me, let me uh, give you a testimony, a short testimony. When the senior pastor in 2013, on December 18th, and so already in December 17th, uh, from the uh, Council of K Korean Churches in Korea, they declared that, you know, Pyongyang Church had no issues or no problems. And the next day, uh, the senior pastor, Reverend Abraham Park, gave a word talking about the number 17. And he said that this is the number, 17, is the number of uh, the last victory of the saints. And uh, Pastor Lee and myself were in the uh, uh, prep room. We were in the preparation room. So we were watching him the whole time, you know, when he comes in. When he comes in the preparation room, you know, we give the shoes and make sure he, you know, puts on his shoes, take off his jacket, and, you know, we're, you know, getting ready to attend to him. He's going through his sermon, and, and he goes out to make his sermon. And... This is the first time that he ever preached and taught about the number 17. And as we were hearing this word for the first time in the prep room, we literally felt the physical presence of God. And it was like an earthquake. I cannot explain it any other way. We were, our hearts were being shocked and shaken and Every time the senior pastor, Reverend Abraham Park, he spoke something, we were like, whoa, whoa. It was just like a shocking, shocking word. We felt this literal earthquake in that place and in our hearts. It was a spiritual earthquake. And this is the power of the word. This is going to happen in the end time where this word is going to shake us and it's going to awaken us. And so, in Jesus' time, all Jerusalem, all Jerusalem, they trembled and they shook when Jesus, who is the reality of the covenant, came. So, Matthew 2, 3, this is not a good shaking, right? This is, uh, this is a shaking in a negative way. When Herod heard the king, when Herod the king heard this, he was troubled. And all Jerusalem with him. So this trouble, it means to be shaken. And it means to be uh, trembling. And so they were troubled and shaken because they heard a new king had arrived. This is not the shaking that we want to have. This is a negative shaking. And when Jesus returns, the heavens and the earth will shake once again. Hebrews 12, 26, it says, Yet once more... I will shake not only the earth, but also the heavens. This is God's promise. And 2 Peter 3.10 also talks about, But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, in which the heavens will pass away with a roar, and the elements will be destroyed with intense heat, and the earth and its works will be burnt up. And so he's going to shake the heavens and the earth once more. When the Lord comes again, everything will shake. But the treasures of all nations that have inherited the kingdom of God, which cannot be shaken, 
will never be moved. And so, what does this mean? If you receive this word, this treasure, then you cannot be shaken because we have inherited a kingdom that will never move or never be shaken no matter what the circumstance is. So if you have received the word, may you be immovable and unshaken and keep your place of worship even in the midst of troubles and tribulations. Hebrews 12, 27, 28, it says, Therefore, since we receive a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us show gratitude by which we may offer to God an acceptable service with reverence and awe. So here, reverence and awe are those who fear God and those who will keep their place of worship. You know, you have to be that believer that takes their stand and takes their post and does not move from it. You cannot be those people who, you know, keep going up and down. You know, they are on fire one moment and then they are like depressed another moment. You know, when they feel good, they come out to church. Or when they get offended or, you know, they don't feel good or they don't feel like coming to church, they don't come out to church. We cannot be like those people. But we need to always be faithful in worship and we need to be faithful in the task that God has given to us. And being faithful to our task is more important than our lives. And that's what you have to, we have to understand. That the task that has been entrusted to you and I is more important than our lives. And saying that backwards, we need to put our lives on the line to fulfill God's work. If you want to say it backwards. And so may you have that attitude like Apostle Paul. Second, and we'll go through this quickly, the temple that only anticipates the Messiah. And so we learned last week that it is the temple with no ark. And this is proclaiming that a new covenant is being proclaimed. And so the ark of the covenant is not there. But God is declaring a new covenant. And so we're going to talk about what this new covenant is. And first of all, it is the promise of the complete forgiveness of our sins. Amen? Amen? So the reason that the new covenant was desperately needed because the old covenant was in itself not able to save us. The law, you know, do this and don't do that. The law could not save us in itself. But the law pointed to our sin. And the law led us to Jesus Christ. So Galatians 7.7, 7, it says, The law was to reveal our sin. And the law was to lead us into needing a Savior. So the law shows us that, ah, we need a Savior. I cannot save myself. I am not righteous. And that's what the law tells us. Second, it is a promise to forgive iniquities and remember them no more. Jeremiah 31, 34. Let's read this last part together. Ready, begin. For I will forgive their iniquity and their sin. I will remember no more. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So no matter what kind of sins you have committed, you know, as you repent and come to God in Christ, they are all forgiven. They are all forgiven and He will not remember and so through the blood of Jesus, we have come into this new covenant. We have been inaugurated into this new covenant, and our sins have been resolved. Hebrews 9.12 talks about that. Hebrews 9.26 talks about the blood of Jesus is what cleanses us and forgives us of our sins. The blood of Jesus. And next, freedom was proclaimed as a result of of the forgiveness of sins. So freedom. Jesus Christ offers up freedom. And in Christ, we have been freed from the law of sin and death. So there's no condemnation. Romans 8, 1 through 2. There is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the Spirit in life 
in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. So there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. It is a promise that everyone, from the least to the greatest, will come to know God. And Jeremiah 31, 34 says that. And he says, They will not teach again, each man his neighbor and each man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they will all know me, from the least of them to the greatest of them. So God himself will teach them through the anointing of the Holy Spirit. God himself will teach us through the working of the Holy Spirit. And this is possible through the work of the Holy Spirit. And Acts 2.17, it says that in the last days, God will pour forth His Spirit on all of mankind. So it's the work of the Holy Spirit. 1 John 2.27, and why don't we uh, read this together. Ready, begin. As for you, the anointing which you received from Him abides in you, and you have no need for anyone to teach you. But as His anointing teaches you about all things, and is true, and is not a lie, and just as it has taught you, you abide in Him. And also John 14, 26, it says that God will send the Helper, the Holy Spirit, and the Spirit will teach you, will teach you all things. And so we need to be full of the Holy Spirit. And next, it is a promise to engrave the Word in our hearts. And so God promises to engrave the Word of God in the tablets of our hearts. So tablets that uh, God, He wrote the Ten Commandments on tablets, right? So tablets were not created, you know, by Apple or Samsung. The first tablets was created by God Himself. The tablets of stone, the Ten Commandments. But now in the end times, the tablets are our hearts where he writes the word of God by his own finger. And this promise is to change the hardened hearts of man stained with sin to voluntarily love God and obey God's word. So he gives us a new heart. Your heart may be hardened, but he gives us a heart of flesh, a true heart hard to worship Him. And if the Word of God is in a person's heart, it prevents them from committing sin. So the Word is what prevents us from sinning. Your Word I have treasured in my heart. Again, the Word is a treasure that I may not sin against you. So that Word of God needs to be in us so that we cannot sin before God. And as a conclusion... I want to wrap and summarize the lecture today. As we face the Parents' Day, we need to honor our parents, honor God the Father, honor our physical parents, and honor our mentors and our spiritual teachers. And as we do so, God says that He will bless us with success on this earth and long life. And they are our teachers who have taught us the Word of God. And if you do so, in Ephesians 6, 1 through 2, it says, God will put his blessings upon you, and your children and your children's children will do well. Yesterday, uh, two days ago, uh, Friday night, we went to Mount Chiri, and our young children went with us. The children, amazing, and they were the first up and the first down, and they were better than us. And as they were going down and going up, uh, I was with them, and, and the people passing them by, they were like, whoa, wow, how old are you? How old are you? You know, And they were so shocked and inspired by these young kids. And, you know, well, we're in elementary school. And as the people passed by, they kept on saying, these children will grow up to be great people. And they, you know, these great blessings. You know, if you can count, conquer the mount, you know, the mountains. If you can count, uh, conquer Mount Chang'an and Mount Jiri, I believe that you can conquer anything in this world. And these young children, and also uh, Daniel Kim's children, you know, Minju and Hyunju, they came. They're small little girls. They came to the top. And so next time, you females have no excuses. You know, you have to come with us next time. And 
they came us to the top and we took pictures with them. And this is how we transmit the faith. And they had a great experience of the word of God, prayer, and a time of blessings by God. And by God's grace, we were able to come back and we were able to uh, give glory to God. And through this experience, uh, we are thankful for Reverend Abraham Park for sacrificing his life, going to the mountain and praying for three years and uh, six months and seven days so that he can understand the word. And through that process, we have the history of redemption series that is bearing fruit all over the world. And on May 13th, uh, we're, we're going to take a team to Scotland and we're going to have a seminar on John Ross and we're going to talk about uh, the author uh, of the History of Redemption series, Dr. Reverend Abraham Park. And there's going to be an opening ceremony for the John Ross Visitor Center. And in the John Ross Visitor Center is the Abraham Park Library. And we work together to make the panels and the showcases. And uh, they are honoring him for the great work. And we have to pray that everything will go well. And through that process, we were able to receive the word, the word of transfiguration, the word of the history of redemption series. And I want to end off on this, uh, this fact and this truth that we need to know, that the senior pastor in his life, there are three times in his life that there was a period of three years and six months. And the first time is when he prayed on that mountain. For how many years? Three years, six months, and seven days. There's another three years and six months. And that is from February of 1994 until August 6th of 1997. And that is exactly three years and six months. And the senior pastor went out into the world and he did world missions. And he set up 300 churches. And through that mission, we were able to receive the word in Canada. And so we are truly thankful for the senior pastor. And there's one more three years and six months in his life. And if you remember in the year 2011, the senior pastor was diagnosed with cancer. And, you know, he had his first operation. And he hadn't spoken in a while. And he got a big surgery. We saw it. And, it's, you know, I have cancer uh, scars in my stomach as well. And his, his scars were much greater than mine. It was like he was cut open, you know, very, uh, very deep. And he spoke the first sermon after that surgery on June 16th of 2011. And it was the title of the sermon was called God's Exact Timetable. And it was in commemoration of uh, Thanksgiving service for uh, the History of Redemption series and the recovery of the series. And that day, it was a hot day. We were outside in front of the, his headquarters and he gave a sermon talking about God's exact timetable. June 16th. 2011. And when you calculate three years and six months exactly from June 16th, 2011, and you fill three years and six months, the next day is December 17th, 2014, which is the day that Reverend Abraham Park went to be with the Lord. And so that is another three years and six months in his life. And we are commemorating him and this month is we have the Pyongang Day. We are commemorating him today as he is our spiritual father. Hold on to that word that has been given to you, the word of transfiguration, the word of the hidden administration through the history of redemption series that has been given to us by him. Hold on to those things until the very end and do not be shaken. And I pray and bless this upon you in the name of the Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this precious word that you've given to us through the senior pastor. And we give you all of the thanks and honor and glory to you. Father, today is Parents' Day, and 
We are honoring our spiritual father, Reverend Abraham Park, and our pastors, but we are also honoring our physical parents and our mentors as well. Father, we ask that we may be able to have the filial duty to our parents so that we may be able to be blessed. We thank you, and all these things we pray in Jesus' precious name with thanksgiving. Amen. Let's give glory to God. Okay, uh, I believe uh, we all have been uh, blessed. And remember, remembering the grace, let's, let us all sing uh, hymn number 259. <laughs> Joseph will come up with the offering prayer. Let's pray. Everlasting Heavenly Father, we thank you all your guidance on your step on our steps, on your path every day. Your word says that the earth is yours and everything in it, the world and all its people belongs to you. We recognize everything we have belongs to you. We acknowledge that our very lives belong to you also. We now offer back to you a portion of what you have given to us. Help us to bring our offering with an eager heart prepared through the whole big days on our uh, every uh, worship. In this holy way, please help us to receive the blessing of Abraham, the blessing of Isaac, and the blessing of Jacob from you, Heavenly God. We pray through the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
성실하신 그 사랑 상한 갈때 꺾지 않으시는 꺼져가는 음, 등불 끄지 않는 그 사랑 변함없으시 성실하신 그 사랑 I will forever sing of your love I will forever sing of your grace Your love so great, so secure Standing true, so Faithful is your love Though I am broken Your love strengthens me Though I am dark You light the fire in me Your love So great, so secure Standing true, so Faithful is your love, your love, Jesus Christ. Thank you so much for the wonderful praise. And um, today uh, we have a couple of uh, newcomers. And uh, first, uh, we have uh, uh, Miss uh, Susanna Park. She's a uh, wife of uh, Reverend uh, Park Taegun. And um, second, we have uh, Miss Diana Williams. And I believe uh, she's a sister of uh, our uh, beloved uh, evangelist Joanna, visiting from US. And also, uh, we have uh, um, Sister Rachel Pan. Uh, she's a daughter of uh, our beloved uh, Deacon Pan and uh, Elders Cho. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, oh De Deacon Cho, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> I upgraded you. <laughs> sorry. Soon to, be. Soon to be. Yes, yes. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> okay. And she's also visiting from uh, New York, uh, US. Welcome. And oh, we, we also have uh, two young brothers uh, joining us from uh, ULA. Uh, first one is uh, Mr. Samuel Kim, and uh, second, uh, Mr. Chris Song. Yeah, and uh, the people that I've just uh, stated, uh, would you please uh, stand up and receive? Stand up. 
yeah, receive our welcoming song. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome, and thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, um, please, uh, please turn to your uh, bulletins for your, the uh, announcements. Okay, okay uh, first, uh, we uh, still have a uh, Pyongyang jail uh, leadership uh, pending, and let us uh, continue to pray for uh, God's will to be realized through this uh, election process, and whoever gets elected, uh, Please uh, pray for him uh, so that he, be, he may become the true soldier and he, true servant of uh, Father God. And uh, second, uh, we have updates on uh, worship restric uh, restrictions. Uh, Shiloh Sanctuary is now open for worship. And however, uh, we will still be wearing our mask indoors. Uh, if you or your family members is not feeling well, uh, please worship from home and let your cell leaders know. Let us continue to remain vigilant uh, through these uh, times together. And third, uh, we had a uh, Mount Jury with uh, Shiloh. Um, Shiloh climbed uh, Mount Jury on uh, Saturday, uh, May 7th, which was uh, yesterday. And uh, thank you, uh, everyone, for uh, your prayers. And uh, those who participated on this trip uh, arrived early, uh, safely and hiked up to the place of um, uh, prayer, where our founding pastor, uh, Reverend Abram Park, prayed for uh, three years and uh, six months and seven days. And fourth, uh, we have a uh, Pyongyang Day uh, coming up on uh, May 17th, 2022. And let us uh, pray and uh, prepare our hearts with uh, thanksgiving. And Thursday night uh, Bible study, uh, we have uh, every Thursday night at 9 p.m. Pastor James uh, leads uh, online Bible studies on Book 11, Volume 2. It's on uh, Jerubbabel's Temple. So this is followed by a short prayer session. Also, the booklets are available at Shiloh office for 7,001 for purchase. And uh, we, have, we still need uh, recruiting uh, volunteers. Uh, if you're interested in volunteering in Shiloh, uh, choir and subtitling and et cetera, uh, please speak to General Secretary, Mr. David Son. And uh, we especially need uh, volunteers to help with uh, English subtitles for uh, Shiloh service. Okay, and uh, Saturday morning Bible study. Uh, Shiloh Sanctuary is open for Bible study gathering. Please come to Shiloh and worship together every Saturday morning at uh, 11 a.m. And the last but not least, uh, Bible scripture reading. Uh, we have uh, this week's Bible scripture reading is from uh, 1 Chronicles chapter 22 to uh, 2 Chronicles uh, chapter 17. And we have an uh, additional announcement from uh, Pastor James. Thank you so much. And especially, uh, we're happy to uh, have our uh, Susanna Park, who is uh, the wife of uh, uh, Park Taegun uh, Moksani. And so uh, she's like our uh, spiritual parent as well. You know, she's the wife of a pastor. And uh, I can understand all of the, uh, you know, the trials and tribulations, the hardships and the tears and all of those things that go into ministry and uh, you know, her husband is a pastor at uh, Chumunjin, and uh, they're really doing a great job. You know, there's, they're holding seminars there, and uh, she's like our spiritual uh, mother. And so let's, you know, let's give uh, thanks to her. Uh, I, I, have, uh, I have an, uh, a special, uh, I think, uh, a heart for pastor's wives because my mom was a pastor's wife, and also for uh, pastor's children, and elders' children, and also uh, the children of our staff. You know, all of those who are in the church, grow up, growing up in the church and in ministry, I mean, it's, it's really tough. It's not easy going through um, all of those things um, as a child. And so I, I'm really thankful for our elder Joe as well, uh, and uh, He's a, a real pillar of Shiloh. Thank you so much for praying for us. We honor you because he's our parent as well. Let's give glory to God. Thank you. On Elder Joe, he's, thank you so much for being with us. Really appreciate you and your family. I want to uh, read the, uh, uh, the offerings. Uh, 
Father, we thank you so much for uh, helping us end the prayer mountain, uh, the prayer uh, mountain on Mount Chiri. And we believe that all of the prayers and hopes of Shiloh members will be answered. Uh, Pastor James and also uh, wife, Rebecca Min. And so we gave a thanks offering. And also President Luke Jung. Uh, through Father's grace, uh, we were able to come back safely from our prayer meeting from Mount Jiri. Thank you so much for keeping us safe. So President Luke Jung and his family has given offerings. And also uh, Aaron, Joe, and also Brian Pan have given uh, their offerings as well. And Jacob Kim, thank you for blessings on Mount Jury. And also Diana Williams, uh, and uh, she's given us thanks offerings as well. I believe that you are uh, posted here at Pyeongtaek, so is that right? Are you here in Pyeongtaek? You're just visiting. Okay, okay. Okay, so let us, let us make her feel welcome and let us make uh, Shalo, you know, like a family and a home for her. Thank you so much for coming. I, I worked with her back in 2009, so <laughs> she's uh, someone special in my heart and also uh, this church's hearts as well. Thank you so much. And by the grace of God, we're able to come back from uh, Mount Jiri. No, no, no one really got hurt and Father really kept us safe and secure, and we were able to really have a great time of bonding and a time of prayer in the cave, and the weather was beautiful. We took many pictures, and uh, if you're interested in, in seeing more pictures, come into our Shiloh chat room. Uh, if you're just in our just in general room, you cannot see many pictures, but ask to be invited into our Shiloh chat room, and you'll be able to see more pictures and uh, I'm so proud of uh, our president, Rick Jung, and also uh, our general secretary, David Sohn, for doing a great job in planning. I'm thankful also for uh, our deacon, Hyun Suk Oh, for driving. That's not easy driving, you know, four or five hours, and then four, waiting, and then driving four or five hours back up. And so I'm thankful for uh, our brother, Hyun Suk Oh, and his sacrifice. Thankful for all the people who prayed for us who weren't able to come. They wanted to come, but were not able to come. And so thank you so much for your sacrifice, for all of the ladies and for all of those who sacrificed and prepared. You know, our, our Noel, uh, she's our staff worker. She helped prepare all the snacks and so forth, bought, buying all of those things. And also uh, for our brother, Kwang Hoon Kim, and also for Seth Oh, and they, you know, I was with them, but uh, they led the team and they prepared, you know, the, tying the rope so that we can you know, hang onto the rope and it's the rope of life. And we, we crossed the big boulders and into the cave. So thank you so much, uh, you know, Deacon Kim and Deacon O for your sacrifice. Thank you so much for praying uh, for us, even though you couldn't come. Thank you so much, choir and praise team, the broadcasting team. You are uh, our teachers. You are our parents. And we give glory to God for your sacrifice. And that's why Shalom is able to exist and to be able to be a blessing around the world. And one more, one more. Because of your sacrifice, there is a group of people that meets in uh, Washington State. And they don't have a pastor and they don't have a church. But they, they watch YouTube uh, and they watch the Shiloh sermons, and they watch the Pyongyang sermons, the translated sermons, and they were able to evangelize 37 people to the word. And I got a letter from them, and they were just so thankful. They gave their tithes, and they gave their offerings from Easter. And your sacrifice and your work is crucial to reach out to people that we don't even know about. We didn't even know about these people. But they sent us a letter, and it was just amazing. And we don't know what kind of impact we have until, you know, we hear these little testimonies. And so, you know, take, uh, take uh, your place in service and take pride in the work that you're doing, knowing that you are making a difference and impact to people around the world that we haven't even met. 
and that we haven't even realized how much, you know, we are affecting people's lives. And so be thankful to God and give glory to him. Amen. Let us all rise and sing hymn number six and have the benediction. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the everlasting and patient love of our Father God, the inspiration, the indwelling and the power of the Holy Spirit may rest upon all who have declared to be fearing God and to be able to sacrifice our lives for His will and for His glory upon our families, upon all of our teachers, our mentors, our professors, our spiritual fathers and mothers in Christ, upon all of the elders and eldresses of this department, upon this Shiloh and this church, from now and forever and evermore. Amen. Let's give glory to God.